In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a custom loading animation using CSS. Let's get started. So to get started, I'm opening up an empty CodePen project. In this video, I'm going to show you the full tutorial from beginning to end. And I'm going to start writing the custom HTML and CSS for this project. The HTML for this project is pretty simple. First, I'm just going to write the HTML tags followed by a body tag. And then in the body tag, I'm going to place five divs. That's all the HTML work for this project and the rest is going to be completed in CSS. So in the CSS, first I'm going to call that div tag and I'm going to add some properties so then we can actually see the divs on the actual screen. So initially I'm going to set a particular height and width. I'm going to add a border radius because I know I'm going to want them to be circles. And for now, I'll just add a random background color so we can see them on the screen. So now we can actually see these divs on the screen, but they are placed one after another, which is typical for the regular display. So I'm going to overrule that by writing display and then inline block. So then they're all right next to one another. Next, I'm going to add a little margin around each element so they're spaced out a little bit more. So I'm going to do 0.5 REM. So there's a little more breathing room between each one. Next, I'm just going to add a body tag. And for this body tag, I'm just going to add a margin left and a margin top. So there's a little bit of breathing room between the dots and the top and left of the screen. Next, I'm going to start to lay out the fundamentals for the animation work. So to do that, first I'm going to write animation and I'm going to add multiple properties within this animation tag. So first I'm going to reference the name of the animation sequence, which we will create. And I'm just going to call it scaling for now because I'm going to want the dots to scale and animate. I'm going to specify a duration, so I'll just write 2.5 seconds. Next, I'll set the type of curve I want the animation to have. So I will set it to an ease in out. And then I will specify how many times I want this animation to play. I want this loading dot sequence to continue forever. So I'm just going to write infinite. Next, I'm going to actually create this animation called scaling. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to write at keyframes scaling. So basically I'm going to create keyframes that will then cause these dots to animate. So to make these dots animate, first you indicate a percentage and then you indicate what kind of state you want the dots to be in at that point. Then you specify another percentage and then you specify how you want the dots to look at that point. And so through the timing and the type of curve of the animation, the program will actually animate between those two states. So initially I'm going to make it a 0%. So at the very beginning of the animation, how do I want these dots to look and behave? Well, originally I want them to be kind of small. I'm going to make a transformation of the scale property. So I'm going to write transform colon scale and then I'll just make it 0 0.2 for now. We can see how that looks. So I want these dots to look pretty small at the beginning. And as you can see, it already started animating because basically it's starting from the zero position, which is 0.2 of the scale. And it's already assuming that I want it to go to full scale throughout the animation. So that's why it's going from 0.2 to one automatically. 50% through the animation, I'm actually going to want the dots to be at a full scale. But at the end, I'm going to want them to return back to that point two. So right now you can see it's going from point two to one, but then just popping back and getting smaller again, which may be an effect that you're going for, but I actually want it to go from point two to one and then back to point two. Over here by that 0%, I'm just gonna write comma 100%. So it should animate from zero to 50% and then back to 100%. And so it'll go from a 0.2 to a one back to a 0.2 of its scaling property, which we can see it's already doing. Next, I'm just going to add some different colors to this. So it actually animates the color as well. So here under this transform scale, I'm going to write background color. And then I'm going to put in a particular hex value that I like 
And then at the 50%, I'm going to make it a different color. So now you can see it's animating between not only the scale, but also the color between the two states. Next, I'm going to want to add a little delay between each actual div, so that way it kind of has this wave effect that occurs. Right now, all of the animations start and end at the same time, so it has this pulsating look and feel, but I'm going to want it to look more like a wave. So in order to do that, we have to use the concept of nth child to add delays. Now, since we already labeled them all as divs, we are going to write div and then colon, nth child, and then specify which child we're referring to. So at first I'll just put zero. And then we're going to add in a delay because I'm going to want the dots to differentiate depending on the time delay of when they start, because that will create that kind of wave effect. So I'm going to write animation dash delay. And initially I'll just write zero seconds. So then I'm going to copy and paste this multiple times. And then modify the child number and the animation delay. So that very first child, I might make it wait 0.2 seconds before animating. The second child, I'll make it wait 0.4. The third child, 0.6. The fourth child, 0.8. And that last child will be one second. So now it has this wave effect where it starts from zero to one and it looks like the first one's going first and then it's going through all the other dots. The last thing I'm going to do is add a little pop of color so when it gets to that full scale, the color changes and it adds another kind of layering effect. So I'm going to go back to my keyframing and add a different value. So basically I want there to be a smooth transition between two colors and then I want it to basically pop when it gets to that full scale. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to add another keyframe between these states. So going from zero to 50, I'm going to add another keyframe and I'll have it set to the 40%. So at 40%, I wanted to actually hold that scaling at one. So it kind of waits a second and holds it before it actually retracts. So I'm going to write transform scale of one. So it'll basically hold that same scale for that 10%. And then I'm going to change the background color of this state. So now this just adds a different kind of pop effect where the color evenly transitions between the zero and 40% mark. It has a very smooth transition. Then it remains the same size between the 40 and the 50%, but the color pops and then it smoothly goes back from the 50% back to the 100% mark. Now, because we don't need this background color anymore, I can remove this background color for the div. It's not even doing anything, so we can just get rid of it because it's excess code. So that's how I create custom loading animations using CSS. Please let me know if you have any questions about the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.